All right, so we're just gonna tidy up our character file. You can see that I've added the faces for the front and side comps. Basically the same process that we uh, took to create the face in the three-quarter comp. Just make sure that you don't copy symbols over from the three-quarter to the other views because when you copy symbols as we covered before, if you create any edits to the artwork inside the new symbol, it'll affect the original one. We don't want that to happen. So always make sure that when you're copying things over, you create a new symbol and copy the artwork from within the original symbol and go inside the new symbol and paste it there. I noticed just from playing around with the character a little bit that I created the head and the antlers separate, but what you really want is the antlers to be inside the head so that the antlers move with the head. And then we can do the secondary action on the antlers later inside the head symbol. We're just going to bring the antlers inside the head. What we could do is just select the layers, right click. You can hold shift down to select both layers and we're going to go cut layers. And then we'll select the head and go inside that. And let's go right to the bottom and we'll select paste layers. You'll notice that sometimes they won't be right in place, but we can just shift them down. We want those antlers to be right at the bottom of our layer list so that they're behind the head. So we'll just grab that head art layer and just drag it up so that our two antler symbols are at the very bottom and they're behind the head. So if I double click now to get back outside and we rotate the head, you can see this, the antlers come with the head now. And that's what we want. So we'll do that for the front view as well. Okay, so we got all the antlers inside the head symbols. The next thing we want to do is clean up our library. You can see we have all these symbols here. The first one is our three-quarter comp, and that's our entire three-quarter Kalian character. And then we have our head, we have antlers, lower arm. You can see we have all of our symbols here. Whether you're working in production or if you're creating this character for your own animated short, you really want to organize these into folders so that you can easily grab these symbols and drag them to the stage when you need them. You can actually grab these symbols, any one of them, and drag them to the stage. Um, to set this up properly for an animator, for yourself, you'd want to uh, put these in folders so they're, the, the pieces are easily accessible. So the first thing I'll do is create a folder right at the bottom of our uh, library area. You'll see these little symbols. One of them is a new folder, just like in the layer area. So we'll just click on that to create a new folder. Okay, so we're going to name this folder Three Quarter Comp. All right, so inside the Three Quarter Comp, I'm going to put all the Three Quarter pieces inside it. And let's just create two more folders and we'll name it front comp and then another one for side comp. All right, so let's do the three quarter comp first. So you can see the very top symbol we have is the three quarter comp. Uh, for now, let's just place it in there just so we have something in there. And as soon as I put something in the folder, you'll see a little arrow next to it on the left where we can click on that and it'll expand and open up the folder so we can see what's inside of it. So I'm going to grab all the three-quarter pieces. You can hold shift down at the top if you have a whole list here. Right to the bottom of the three-quarter symbols, you can hold shift down to select all of them. Or you can hold control down and select one at a time. So let's just grab all of these and we'll drag it right onto the folder. And now they're inside the folder. You can see they're, they've all shifted to the right a little bit. And you can close this folder up. I'm just going to check and make sure that nothing else is three-quarter. All right, so we'll go to the, the front comp folder. Let's select everything that's front. You can click on the first one, hold shift down, and click on the bottom of the list of front pieces. And we can hold down over that selection. We can drag it over top of the front comp folder and release. And now if we click the arrow next to the folder, we can see we have all the front comp pieces inside that folder. And then we have our side comp folder. Let's just grab everything that says side, and we'll drag it in there. All right, now I got a few extra stragglers here. So yeah, these ones, I didn't name them side, front, or three quarters, so I'll just do that now. Okay, the hands I'm gonna leave alone because the hands are not three quarter front or side. We're using the same hand symbol for all the views because the hand symbol has all the views inside of it. So I'm just gonna leave the hands outside loose, but these two feet are indeed for the three quarter view. So I'm just gonna grab those two and drag them into the three quarter comp. This is just our reference file. You can select it and hit delete don't really need it in the file anymore, but I'm just going to leave it there just in case I need it for later. Then we have all the symbols for the face and then we have our shadow. So I think I'll create another folder and just name it face. Select all of our face pieces and drag it into there. So you can see that's a lot tidier. We don't have this huge list and we can easily go to uh, the pieces for any view that we want, which will come in really handy for animation later on. And if you want, you can create a folder to put the hands in, but really there's only two there. So I'm just gonna leave it as it is. All right, so once we do that, we don't need these comps anymore. If we look inside our three quarter folder, we have the three quarter comp here. At any time, you can drag that onto your stage. 
we have the front comp at the top of the list and that's the entire front comp that we created here and we have the side comp here the whole thing is there so they're saved in our library and they've already been created and they're saved here so we don't nearly need them on the stage so I can really just select these and hit delete so this is going to be our master file our master character file anytime that we create a new scene or a shot the workflow is usually to import this file into your new scene file and to leave this file alone if anytime we want to make adjustments to the character we would do it to the master file that way if we create a bunch of different shots for an animated short or an animated production I could just do it to the master file and then any shot I create after that we can bring the new adjusted character into the scene files alright so we don't need these layers anymore so we're just gonna delete these front view and side view uh, layers this is the reference drawing that we had, and this is the character. So I'm just going to rename this Kalian. All right, so now that we have a library tidied up, I'll just show you a quick example of how the animators may use the library items. So I'll just do a quick head turn just so you can see how it works. I'll set a key. We'll do maybe a two frame anticipation. So I'm just going to have them look from left to right. So, say for example, if, a, if an animator is doing a head turn, they might choose to use the front view just as an in between. After the, the head anticipates a little bit or starts to move into the head turn, on the next frame they want to switch to the front view for the in-between. Go to the next frame over, they can set a key. And go to the front comp folder, select the head and drag it onto the stage. They can just delete the three-quarter head by selecting it and hitting delete on the keyboard. So now on this frame, it goes from three-quarter to front. So we have that front symbol set to play once or loop. So we're just going to put it on single frame for now. I'll just position it a little bit. Normally in a head, a head turn would dip down through the middle. And then on the next frame the animator might choose to go back to the three-quarter head but flip it. So we can go back to the frame where the three-quarter head is on. Copy frames, paste frames, and then just give it a flip. So now we have three-quarter head goes to front view. We drag that front view head from the library. We dragged it onto the onto the stage, but just for that frame. And then we went back to three quarter. The animator would probably finish off the turn with a little bit of movement and coming out of the dip. Create classic tweens on both sides of this head turn. And then they might end up with something like this. A lot of times you'll get rigs and they'll be set to loop. And that's fine. You can see all the uh, the artwork that exists inside the head by setting this the head symbol to loop but the animator will have to go and change this to play once if you want to do the animators a favor you might want to just set it to that right away and then if we go inside the head it's the same thing you can see all the all the artwork playing so eyes and eyebrows you'd want to be set to single frame so you'd have to select each one individually so when we scrub we don't see the eyebrows uh, looping anymore because the animation is going to take place, for example, the, the eye animation will take place on this layer. So we, we want it to have it set to single frame so that, that way on any particular keyframe, they set a keyframe here, and they select the eye symbol and they want to change the animation here, they can just change the instance of the symbol. And that way when they scrub over, the animation will change right on the keyframe that they indicated. <clears throat> so right now we still have the mouth looping. So we're just going to select the mouth symbol and set that to single frame. So you want the head symbol set to play once, and you'd want all the pieces inside the head, if we go inside, you'd want all the pieces to be set to single frame. And that way the animators can just go ahead and start animating. All the other pieces of the body can set to single frame. So that's all for flash rigging. I hope you enjoyed the class. Don't hesitate to email or call with any questions. I'm always here to help. Take care and have a great day.